Nineveh, Akkadian, Uruni, Nu, Aninua, Syriac, Nyunwe was an ancient Assyrian city of Upper Mesopotamia, located on the outskirts of Mosul in modern-day northern Iraq. It is located on the eastern bank of the Tigris River, and was the capital of the Neo-Assyrian Empire. Today it is a common name for the half of Mosul which lies on the eastern bank of the Tigris. It was the largest city in the world for some 50 years until the year 612 BC when, after a bitter period of civil war in Assyria, it was sacked by a coalition of its former subject peoples, the Babylonians, Medes, Chaldeans, Persians, Scythians and Cimmerians. Its ruins are across the river from the modern-day major city of Mosul, in the Ninawa Governorate of Iraq. The two main tells, or mound ruins, within the walls are Koyunji the northern palace, and Tel Nabi Yunus. Large amounts of Assyrian sculpture and other artifacts have been excavated and are now located in museums around the world. The Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant ISIL occupied the site during the mid-2010s, during which time they bulldozed several of the monuments there and caused considerable damage to the others. Iraqi forces recaptured the area in January 2017. Name The English placename Nineveh comes from Latin Ninev and Septuagint Greek Ninu, Ninu under influence of the Biblical Hebrew Ninwe, Ninua from the Akkadian Ninua var. Nina or Old Babylonian Ninua. The original meaning of the name is unclear but may have referred to a patron goddess. The cuneiform for Nina, is a fish within a house cf. Aramaic Nuna, fish. This may have simply intended, place of fish, or may have indicated a goddess associated with fish or the Tigris, possibly originally of Hurrian origin. The city was later said to be devoted to, the goddess Ishtar of Nineveh, and Nina was one of the Sumerian and Assyrian names of that goddess. The city was also known as Nini or Ni in ancient Egyptian, Ninua in Mari, Ninawa in Aramaic, Nenwa in Syriac, and Nainava Ninua in Persian. Nabi Yunus is the Arabic for Prophet Jonah. Koyunjik was, according to Layard, a Turkish name, and it was known as Armaushia by the Arabs, and is thought to have some connection with the Kara Koyunlu dynasty. Geography <laughs> 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 The remains of ancient Nineveh, the mound ruins of Koyunjik and Nabi Yunus, are located on a level part of the plain near the junction of the Tigris and the Khosr rivers within an area of 750 hectares 1, acres circumscribed by a 12-kilometre brick rampart. This whole extensive space is now one immense area of ruins overlaid in parts by new suburbs of the city of Mosul. Nineveh was an important junction for commercial routes crossing the Tigris on the great highway between the Mediterranean Sea and the Indian Ocean, thus uniting the east and the west. It received wealth from many sources, so that it became one of the greatest of all the region's ancient cities and the capital of the Neo-Assyrian Empire. Topic: Early History. Nineveh was one of the oldest and greatest cities in antiquity. The area was settled as early as 6000 BC during the late Neolithic. The deep sounding at Nineveh uncovered layers now dated to early Hasuna culture period. By 3000 BC, the area had become an important religious center for the Mesopotamian goddess Ishtar. The early city and subsequent buildings was constructed on a fault line and, consequently, suffered damage from a number of earthquakes. One such event destroyed the first temple of Ishtar, which was rebuilt in 2260 BC by the Akkadian king Manishtushu. Texts from the Hellenistic period later offered an eponymous Ninus as the founder of Nineveh, although there is no historical basis for this. <laughs> Ninevite V period The regional influence of Nineveh became particularly pronounced during the archaeological period known as Ninevite V, or Ninevite V BC. This period is defined primarily by the characteristic pottery that is found widely throughout northern Mesopotamia. Also, for the northern Mesopotamian region, the early Jezera chronology has been developed by archaeologists. According to this regional chronology, Ninevite V is equivalent to the early Jezera I-2 period. Ninevite V was preceded by the late Uruk period. Ninevite V pottery is roughly contemporary to the early Transcaucasian culture ware, and the Gemdit Nasser ware. 
Iraqi scarlet ware culture also belongs to this period. This colorful painted pottery is somewhat similar to Jemdat Nasser ware. Scarlet ware was first documented in the Diyala River basin in Iraq. Later, it was also found in the nearby Hamran basin, and in Luristan. <inaudible> Old Assyrian period The historic Nineveh is mentioned in the Old Assyrian Empire during reign of Shamshi Adad I in about 1800 BC as a center of worship of Ishtar, whose cult was responsible for the city's early importance. The goddess's statue was sent to Pharaoh Amenhotep III of Egypt in the 14th century BC, by orders of the king of Mitanni. The Assyrian city of Nineveh became one of Mitanni's vassals for half a century until the early 14th century BC, when the Assyrian king Ashur Ubalit I reclaimed it in 1365 BC while overthrowing the Mitanni Empire and creating the Middle Assyrian Empire. 1365 BC. There is a large body of evidence to show that Assyrian monarchs built extensively in Nineveh during the late 3rd and 2nd millenniums BC. It appears to have been originally an Assyrian provincial town. Later monarchs whose inscriptions have appeared on the high city include the Middle Assyrian Empire kings Shalmaneser I (1274–1245 BC) and Tiglath-Pileser I (1114–1076 BC), both of whom were active builders in Ashur (Asher). Topic: <laughs> Neo-Assyrians. During the Neo-Assyrian Empire, particularly from the time of Ashurnasirpal II ruled 883–859 BC onward, there was considerable architectural expansion. Successive monarchs such as Tiglath-Pileser III, Sargon II, Sennacherib, Esarhaddon, and Ashurbanipal kept in repair and founded new palaces, as well as temples to Sin, Ashur, Nergal, Shamash, Ninurta, Ishtar, Tammuz, Nisrich and Nabu. Sennacherib's development of Nineveh It was Sennacherib who made Nineveh a truly magnificent city c. 700 BC. He laid out new streets and squares and built within it the Southwest Palace, or Palace Without a Rival, the plan of which has been mostly recovered and has overall dimensions of about 503 by 242 meters 1,650 feet times 794 feet. It comprised at least 80 rooms, many of which were lined with sculpture. A large number of cuneiform tablets were found in the palace. The solid foundation was made out of limestone blocks and mud bricks. It was 22 meters 72 feet tall. In total, the foundation is made of roughly 2,680,000 cubic meters of brick approximately 160 million bricks. The walls on top, made out of mud brick, were an additional 20 meters 66 feet tall. Some of the principal doorways were flanked by colossal stone Lamassu door figures weighing up to 30,000 kilograms 30 t. These were winged Mesopotamian lions or bulls, with human heads. These were transported 50 kilometers 31 miles from quarries at Balatai, and they had to be lifted up 20 meters 66 feet once they arrived at the site, presumably by a ramp. There are also 3,000 meters feet of stone Assyrian palace reliefs, that include pictorial records documenting every construction step including carving the statues and transporting them on a barge. One picture shows 44 men towing a colossal statue. The carving shows three men directing the operation while standing on the colossus. Once the statues arrived at their destination, the final carving was done. Most of the statues weigh between 9,000 and 27,000 kilograms (19,842 and 59,525 pounds). The stone carvings in the walls include many battle scenes, impalings, and scenes showing Sennacherib's men parading the spoils of war before him. The inscriptions boasted of his conquests. He wrote of Babylon: "Its inhabitants, young and old, I did not spare, and with their corpses I filled the streets of the city." A full and characteristic set shows the campaign leading up to the siege of Lachish in 701, it is the finest from the reign of Sennacherib, and now in the British Museum. He later wrote about a battle in Lachish, and Hezekiah of Judah who had not submitted to my yoke, him I shut up in Jerusalem his royal city like a caged bird. 
earthworks I threw up against him, and anyone coming out of his city gate I made pay for his crime. His cities which I had plundered I had cut off from his land. At this time, the total area of Nineveh comprised about 7 square kilometers, 1730 acres, and 15 great gates penetrated its walls. An elaborate system of 18 canals brought water from the hills to Nineveh, and several sections of a magnificently constructed aqueduct erected by Sennacherib were discovered at Jerwin, about 65 kilometers, 40 miles distant. The enclosed area had more than 100,000 inhabitants maybe closer to 150,000, about twice as many as Babylon at the time, placing it among the largest settlements worldwide. Some scholars believe that the garden which Sennacherib built next to his palace, with its associated irrigation works, comprised the original hanging gardens of Babylon. <laughs> After Ashurbanipal Nineveh's greatness was short-lived. In around 627 BC, after the death of its last great king Ashurbanipal, the Neo-Assyrian Empire began to unravel through a series of bitter civil wars between rival claimants for the throne, and in 616 BC Assyria was attacked by its own former vassals, the Babylonians, Chaldeans, Medes, Persians, Scythians and Cimmerians. In about 616 BC Kalhu was sacked, the allied forces eventually reached Nineveh, besieging and sacking the city in 612 BC, following bitter house to house fighting, after which it was raised. Most of the people in the city who could not escape to the last Assyrian strongholds in the north and west were either massacred or deported out of the city and into the countryside where they founded new settlements. Many unburied skeletons were found by the archaeologists at the site. The Assyrian Empire then came to an end by 605 BC, the Medes and Babylonians dividing its colonies between themselves. Assyria, including the Nineveh region, continued to exist as a geo-political entity Achaemenid Assyria, Athura, Ashuristan etc. under the rule of various empires until its dissolution in the mid-7th century AD. Following the defeat in 612 BC, the site remained largely unoccupied for centuries and the ruins remained largely intact during Achaemenid rule, though the library of Ashurbanipal may still have been in use until around the time of Alexander the Great. The city is mentioned again in the Battle of Nineveh in 627 AD, which was fought between the Eastern Roman Empire and the Sasanian Empire of Persia near the ancient city. From the Arab Islamic conquest in 637 AD until the modern period, the city of Mosul on the opposite bank of the Tigris became the successor of ancient Nineveh. <laughs> Biblical Nineveh In the Hebrew Bible, Nineveh is first mentioned in Genesis chapter 10 verse 11. Asher left that land, and built Nineveh. Some modern English translations interpret Asher in the Hebrew of this verse as the country, Assyria, rather than a person, thus making Nimrod, rather than Asher, the founder of Nineveh. Sir Walter Raleigh's notion that Nimrod built Nineveh, and the cities in Genesis chapter 10 verses 11 to 12, has also been refuted by scholars. The discovery of the 15 Jubilees texts found amongst the Dead Sea Scrolls, has since shown that, according to the Jewish sects of Qumran, Genesis chapter 10 verse 11 affirms the apportionment of Nineveh to Asher. The attribution of Nineveh to Asher is also supported by the Greek Septuagint, King James Bible, Geneva Bible, and by historian Flavius Josephus in his Antiquites of the Jews Antiquities, I, V, 4. Nineveh was the flourishing capital of the Assyrian Empire and was the home of King Sennacherib, king of Assyria, during the biblical reign of King Hezekiah Yehizekiah and the lifetime of Judean prophet Isaiah. As recorded in Hebrew scripture, Nineveh was also the place where Sennacherib died at the hands of his two sons, who then fled to the vassal land of Rrt Urartu. The book of the prophet Nahum is almost exclusively taken up with prophetic denunciations against Nineveh. Its ruin and utter desolation are foretold. Its end was strange, sudden, and tragic. According to the Bible, it was God's doing, his judgment on Assyria's pride Isaiah chapter 10 verses 5 to 19. In fulfillment of prophecy, God made an utter end of the place. It became a desolation. The prophet Zephaniah also predicts its destruction along with the fall of the empire of which it was the capital. Nineveh is also the setting of the book of Tobit. The Book of Jonah, set in the days of the Assyrian Empire, describes it as an exceedingly great city of three days' journey in breadth, whose population at that time is given as 
more than 120,000. The ruins of Koyunjik, Nimrud, Karamals and Khorsabad form the four corners of an irregular quadrangle. The ruins of Nineveh, with the whole area included within the parallelogram they form by lines drawn from the one to the other, are generally regarded as consisting of these four sites. The Book of Jonah depicts Nineveh as a wicked city worthy of destruction. God sent Jonah to preach to the Ninevites of their coming destruction, and they fasted and repented because of this. As a result, God spared the city. When Jonah protests against this, God states he is showing mercy for the population who are ignorant of the difference between right and wrong who cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and mercy for the animals in the city. Nineveh's repentance and salvation from evil can be found in the Jewish Tanakh also read by Christians and the Muslim Quran. To this day, Syriac and Oriental Orthodox churches commemorate the three days Jonah spent inside the fish during the fast of Nineveh. The Christians observing this holiday fast by refraining from food and drink. Churches encourage followers to refrain from meat, fish and dairy products. Classical history Before the great archaeological excavations in the 19th century, there was almost no historical knowledge of the great Assyrian Empire and of its magnificent capital. Other cities that had perished, such as Palmyra, Persepolis, and Thebes, had left ruins to mark their sites and tell of their former greatness, but of this city, Imperial Nineveh, no vestige seemed to remain, and the very place on which it had stood became only a matter of conjecture. In the days of the Greek historians Tejas and Herodotus, 400 BC, Nineveh had become a thing of the past, and when Xenophon c. BC, the historian passed the place in the retreat of the Ten Thousand the very memory of its name had been lost. It was buried out of sight, in his History of the World written c. 1616 Sir Walter Raleigh erroneously asserted attributing the information to Johannes Nochleris c. 1425–1510 that Nineveh had originally had the name Campsor before Ninus supposedly rebuilt it. This was still regarded as correct information when news of Layard's discoveries see below reached the West. Archaeology The location of Nineveh was known, to some, continuously through the Middle Ages. Benjamin of Tudela visited it in 1170, Petachia of Regensburg soon after, Karsten Niebuhr recorded its location during the 1761–67 Danish expedition. Niebuhr wrote afterwards that, I did not learn that I was at so remarkable a spot, till near the river. Then they showed me a village on a great hill, which they call Nunia, and a mosque, in which the prophet Jonah was buried. Another hill in this district is called Kala Nunia, or the castle of Nineveh. On that lies a village coins jug. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Excavation history. In 1842, the French consul general at Mosul, Paul Emile Bada, began to search the vast mounds that lay along the opposite bank of the river. The locals whom he employed in these excavations, to their great surprise, came upon the ruins of a building at the Mound of Khorsabad, which, on further exploration, turned out to be the royal palace of Sargon II, in which large numbers of reliefs were found and recorded, though they had been damaged by fire and were mostly too fragile to remove. In 1847 the young British diplomat Austin Henry Layard explored the ruins. Layard did not use modern archaeological methods, his stated goal was to obtain the largest possible number of well-preserved objects of art at the least possible outlay of time and money." In the Kuyunjik Mound, Layard rediscovered in 1849 the lost palace of Sennacherib with its 71 rooms and colossal bas-reliefs. He also unearthed the palace and famous library of Ashurbanipal with 22,000 cuneiform clay tablets. Most of Layard's material was sent to the British Museum, but two large pieces were given to Lady Charlotte Guest and eventually found their way to the Metropolitan Museum. The study of the archaeology of Nineveh reveals the wealth and glory of ancient Assyria under kings such as Esarhaddon (681–669 BC) and Ashurbanipal (669–626 the work of exploration was carried on by George Smith, Hormuzd Rassam a modern Assyrian, and others, and a vast treasury of specimens of Assyria was incrementally exhumed for European museums. 
Palace after palace was discovered, with their decorations and their sculptured slabs, revealing the life and manners of this ancient people, their arts of war and peace, the forms of their religion, the style of their architecture, and the magnificence of their monarchs. The Mound of Koyunjik was excavated again by the archaeologists of the British Museum, led by Leonard William King, at the beginning of the 20th century. Their efforts concentrated on the site of the Temple of Nabu, the god of writing, where another cuneiform library was supposed to exist. However, no such library was ever found, most likely, it had been destroyed by the activities of later residents. The excavation started again in 1927, under the direction of Campbell Thompson, who had taken part in King's expeditions. Some works were carried out outside Koyunjik, for instance on the Mound of Nebi Yunus, which was the ancient arsenal of Nineveh, or along the outside walls. Here, near the northwestern corner of the walls, beyond the pavement of a later building, the archaeologists found almost 300 fragments of prisms recording the royal annals of Sennacherib, Esarhaddon, and Ashurbanipal, beside a prism of Esarhaddon which was almost perfect. After the Second World War, several excavations were carried out by Iraqi archaeologists. From 1951 to 1958 Muhammad Ali Mustafa worked the site. The work was continued from 1967 through 1971 by Tariq Madloum. Some additional excavation occurred by Manal Jabor in 1980, and Manal Jabor in 1987. For the most part, these digs focused on Nebi Yunus. Most recently, British archaeologist and Assyriologist Professor David Stronach of the University of California, Berkeley conducted a series of surveys and digs at the site from 1987 to 1990, focusing his attentions on the several gates and the existent mudbrick walls, as well as the system that supplied water to the city in times of siege. The excavation reports are in progress. Topic. Archaeological remains. Today, Nineveh's location is marked by two large mounds, Koyunjik and Nabi Yunus, Prophet Jonah, and the remains of the city walls about 12 kilometers 7 miles in circumference. The Neo-Assyrian levels of Koyunjik have been extensively explored. The other mound, Nabi Yunus, has not been as extensively explored because there was an Arab Muslim shrine dedicated to that prophet on the site. On July 24, 2014, the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant destroyed the shrine as part of a campaign to destroy religious sanctuaries it deems un-Islamic. The ruined mound of Kuyunjik rises about 20 meters 66 feet above the surrounding plain of the ancient city. It is quite broad, measuring about 800 by 500 meters 2,625 feet times 1,640 feet. Its upper layers have been extensively excavated, and several Neo-Assyrian palaces and temples have been found there. A deep sounding by Max Malawan revealed evidence of habitation as early as the 6th millennium BC. Today, there is little evidence of these old excavations other than weathered pits and earth piles. In 1990, the only Assyrian remains visible were those of the entry court and the first few chambers of the palace of Sennacherib. Since that time, the palace chambers have received significant damage by looters. Portions of relief sculptures that were in the palace chambers in 1990 were seen on the antiquities market by 1996. Photographs of the chambers made in 2003 show that many of the fine relief sculptures there have been reduced to piles of rubble. Nebi Yunus is located about 1 km .6 miles south of Kuyunjik and is the secondary ruin mound at Nineveh. On the basis of texts of Sennacherib, the site has traditionally been identified as the armory of Nineveh, and a gate and pavements excavated by Iraqis in 1954 have been considered to be part of the armory complex. Excavations in 1990 revealed a monumental entryway consisting of a number of large inscribed orthostats and bull man sculptures, some apparently unfinished. Topic: <laughs> City wall and gates. The ruins of Nineveh are surrounded by the remains of a massive stone and mud brick wall dating from about 700 BC. About 12 kilometers in length, the wall system consisted of an ashlar stone retaining wall about 6 meters 20 feet high surmounted by a mud brick wall about 10 meters 33 feet high and 15 meters 49 feet thick. The stone retaining wall had projecting stone towers spaced about every 18 meters 59 feet. The stone wall and towers were topped by three steppe merlins. 
Five of the gateways have been explored to some extent by archaeologists. Mashki Gate translated, Gate of the Watering Places. It was perhaps used to take livestock to water from the Tigris which currently flows about 1.5 kilometers (0.9 miles) to the west. It has been reconstructed in fortified mudbrick to the height of the top of the vaulted passageway. The Assyrian original may have been plastered and ornamented. Nergal Gata named for the god Nergal, it may have been used for some ceremonial purpose, as it is the only known gate flanked by stone sculptures of winged bull men The reconstruction is conjectural, as the gate was excavated by Layard in the mid-19th century and reconstructed in the mid-20th century. Adad Gate Adad Gate was named for the god Adad. A reconstruction was begun in the 1960s by Iraqis but was not completed. The result was a mixture of concrete and eroding mudbrick, which nonetheless does give some idea of the original structure. The excavator left some features unexcavated, allowing a view of the original Assyrian construction. The original brickwork of the outer vaulted passageway was well exposed, as was the entrance of the vaulted stairway to the upper levels. The actions of Nineveh's last defenders could be seen in the hastily built mudbrick construction which narrowed the passageway from 4 to 2 meters 13 to 7 feet. Around April 13, 2016, ISIL demolished both the gate and the adjacent wall by flattening them with a bulldozer. Shamash Gate Named for the sun god Shamash, it opens to the road to Erbil. It was excavated by Layard in the 19th century. The stone retaining wall and part of the mudbrick structure were reconstructed in the 1960s. The mudbrick reconstruction has deteriorated significantly. The stone wall projects outward about 20 meters 66 feet from the line of main wall for a width of about 70 meters 230 feet. It is the only gate with such a significant projection. The mound of its remains towers above the surrounding terrain. Its size and design suggest it was the most important gate in Neo-Assyrian times. Halzi Gata near the south end of the eastern city wall. Exploratory excavations were undertaken here by the University of California Expedition of 1989-1990. There is an outward projection of the city wall, though not as pronounced as at the Shamash Gate. The entry passage had been narrowed with mudbrick to about 2 meters 7 feet as at the Adad Gate. Human remains from the final battle of Nineveh were found in the passageway. Topic. Threats to the site The site of Nineveh is exposed to decay of its reliefs by a lack of proper protective roofing, vandalism and looting holes dug into chamber floors. Future preservation is further compromised by the site's proximity to expanding suburbs. The ailing Mosul Dam is a persistent threat to Nineveh as well as the city of Mosul. This is in no small part due to years of disrepair. In 2006, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers cited it as the most dangerous dam in the world. The cancellation of a second dam project in the 1980s to act as flood relief in case of failure, and occupation by ISIL in 2014 resulting in fleeing workers and stolen equipment. If the dam fails, the entire site could be under as much as 45 feet 14 meters underwater. In an October 2010 report titled Saving Our Vanishing Heritage, Global Heritage Fund named Nineveh one of 12 sites most on the verge of irreparable destruction and loss, citing insufficient management, development pressures and looting as primary causes. By far, however, the greatest threat to Nineveh has been purposeful human actions by ISIL, which occupied that area in mid-2010s. In early 2015 they announced their intention to destroy the walls of Nineveh if the Iraqis try to liberate the city. They also threatened to destroy artifacts. On February 26 they destroyed several items and statues in the Mosul Museum and are believed to have plundered others to sell overseas. The items were mostly from the Assyrian exhibit, which ISIL declared blasphemous and idolatrous. There were 300 items in the museum out of a total of 1,900, with the other 1,600 being taken to the National Museum of Iraq in Baghdad for security reasons prior to the 2014 fall of Mosul. Some of the artifacts sold and or destroyed were from Nineveh. Just a few days after the destruction of the museum pieces, they demolished remains at major UNESCO World Heritage Sites Khorsabad, Nimrud, and Hatra. Regation of the Ninevites Nineveh's wish. 
Assyrians of the Ancient Church of the East, Chaldean Catholic Church, Syriac Catholic Church, Syriac Orthodox Church, Assyrian Church of the East and St. Thomas Christians of the Syro-Malabar Catholic Church observe a fast called Bayuda di Ninwe which means Nineveh's prayer. Copts and Ethiopian Orthodox also maintain this fast. Topic. Popular culture The English Romantic poet Edwin Atherstone wrote an epic The Fall of Nineveh. The work tells of an uprising against its king Sardanapalus of all the nations that were dominated by the Assyrian Empire. He is a great criminal. He has had 100 prisoners of war executed. After a long struggle the town is conquered by Median and Babylonian troops led by Prince Arbaces and priest Belisus. The king sets his own palace on fire and dies inside together with all his concubines. Atherstone's friend, the artist John Martin, created a painting of the same name inspired by the poem. The English poet John Maysfield's well-known, fanciful 1903 poem Cargos mentions Nineveh in its first line. Nineveh is also mentioned in Rudyard Kipling's 1897 poem Recessional. The 1962 Italian peplum movie, War Gods of Babylon, is based on the sacking and fall of Nineveh by the combined rebel armies led by the Babylonians. Topic. See also Cities of the Ancient Near East Destruction of cultural heritage by ISIL Historical urban community sizes Isaac of Nineveh List of megalithic sites Short chronology timeline Tel Kepi Topic. Notes Topic. References This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Easton, Matthew George 1897. Nineveh. Easton's Bible Dictionary New and Revised Ed. T. Nelson and Sons. Topic. External links Joanne Farchok Bajali photos of Nineveh taken in May 2003 showing damage from looters. John Malcolm Russell, Stolen Stones, the Modern Sack of Nineveh, in Archaeology, Looting of Sculptures in the 1990s. Nineveh page at the British Museum's website. Includes photographs of items from their collection. University of California Digital Nineveh Archives A teaching and research tool presenting a comprehensive picture of Nineveh within the history of archaeology in the Near East, including a searchable data repository for meaningful analysis of currently unlinked sets of data from different areas of the site and different episodes in the 160-year history of excavations. SciArc Digital Nineveh Archives, publicly accessible, free depository of the data from the previously linked UC Berkeley Nineveh Archives project, fully linked and geo-referenced in a UC Berkeley, SciArc research partnership to develop the archive for open web use. Includes Creative Commons licensed media items. Photos of Nineveh, 1989-1990 ABC3, Babylonian Chronicle Concerning the Fall of Nineveh Layard's Nineveh and its remains full text